All right, hey ladies, what's up? Yeah. You guys have a super abundant amount of energy, which is so cool. So I'm going to ask you to give that energy to me. I'll give it back to you. I like to walk around a lot, so uh, that's okay. I'll go back to whatever you can this. So the uh, first thing is I want everybody to stand up. Stop whatever you're doing if you're doing something else. I did want to do a little concert from the Indian so I want to show you guys a little tiny exercise. If you do, if you're feeling a little great in energy, you can after lunch, your body takes energy, it uses it to digest food, so your brain starts to get slow and things of that nature. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend down our legs, let go, and see who your arms are soft and soft. Try to be your neighbor, try to be your neighbor, try to be your neighbor. Go, 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 Thank you. 
don't want to see your potential. So what is potential? As soon as I heard that topic from Michelle, I was like, what really is potential? So I looked it up on dictionary.com and said, having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. Potential. Now, So, for instance, 
I'll tell you a little story. Yesterday, my mom got T-boned by somebody who tried to beat her at lunch. And I got a call. I was just about to go to my friend's house. I just moved back from the bridal shower. Everything's awesome. I get a phone call from my sister, and she says, Mom's been T-boned. She can't feel her left side of her body. And she's at the hospital now. And my nephew was also in call. He had been studying through the studies, fine, and everything like that. But instantly, what's your initial reaction? Fear. You're going to die. What else? You have some questions. Well, if you had a call saying your mom's in action and she couldn't feel the left side of her body, I'm you guys, the left side is where your heart, if your left side goes numb, because it's coming along the heart, coming along the brain. Well, I want you to really think about it. I want you to manifest it in your body right now. What would you feel? I cried. Panic. Crying. That's exactly what all my sisters did. Oh my god, mom's in the hospital, I can't believe it. I was like, oh, I'm freaking, freaking. And I don't know if you're call. And I was so shocked because in my family, that's our just reaction to everything. Overreact like crazy. And me, this is what I did. I said, okay, I'll be right there. I was able to stay calm. But why? Because my focus wasn't on what could have happened. My focus wasn't on what could be happening in the future. My focus was simply on the news that I have to do. And isn't that one great thing to do? Am I supposed to try to find this and take these games? Like, you could be, especially if you don't we create these crazy stories in our head and then they just want to come to me out. And just focus on that. I focus on my mom's still alive. And that's me. I'm going to grab my mom, take my mother, and I'm going to go to the hospital. And then see that what happens. So now we're going to go in. Everybody close your eyes. Not Jeopardy yet. Yeah. Everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes, close your eyes. All right. Now you're going to have four seconds. You're going to open your eyes and you're going to look for everything that's the color blue. You're going to have four seconds when I say go. After I say stop, you're going to close your eyes again. You're looking for everything that's blue. You're going to scan the room and tell me everything that's blue. Not to, don't shout it out. Just think about it in your head. Ready? Set. Go. Open up. Pull a drive. All right. Now, tell me everything that was green. Not from your memory, but from what you were focusing on. You guys can open your eyes. So, what I'm trying to prove to you is that when you're focusing on things that are blue, you're not going to really be able to recall anything that's green. You must have a memory and you know you have it. Alright, so that's a little fun. So, I also want you guys, I love this because it's so Osteen and it really, really does lose your voice. So, who wants to volunteer? Okay, you, you can stand there, you can come here, come on. Okay, now tell me about something you really don't like. You like spiders? Oh, yeah. Some people like spiders. So, let me ask you a question. So, if you were looking through the channel on your TV, and big, ugly, arachnid, you saw a space, large, on your TV, and you have a big screen and it's right on your face, are you going to stay on that channel? Maybe so. I don't think you're really interested in finding out about this ugly rap and this right face, right? right? So, you would scream and you'd be like, freak it out. So, when these negative thoughts, like, I can't do this, that person's that person so mean, you know, do that, when these negative thoughts are running through your head, you have every power within you to change the channel. But for some reason, we like to You have the power with your brain. You have the power within your brain to change the channel. Now let me show you how the brain actually does not So you have some sort of stimulus, right? So if 
I say dog, what would, what's your first thought? First one, dog. What? Cat. All right, if I say dog, what's your first one? Okay, different. First person, why do they dog? Okay. Your dog's name. Okay, all different answers. So, if I say dog, I, I think of four legs or something, I don't know. So we have, I don't know if you've ever heard, ever learned psychology or anything like that, but you kind of like trees and stuff like that. So you have this. So instantly, when you hear dog or you hear some sort of stimulus word, your brain triggers this, whatever that was, cat or whatever, like an instant thought, instant thought. The coolest thing about the brain, guys, you need to really learn how to bring your intelligence. The coolest thing is the design so Oh, man, it's really, it really geeks me out. So, <laughs> the cool thing is that you can redirect your brain to think of something else. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes conscious effort. When you do this, okay, to think causes your body to use up energy. Your body is a really lazy bomb and doesn't want to use energy for much. So it's going to try to automate as many processes as possible, especially when it comes to thinking. That's why we can walk straight, because our brain is going through all of these different stimulus at one time, saying, the floor is there, the walls are there, the table there, I can walk here. So there are a million processes going on in your head, of course, there's all the conscious. You can redirect your thoughts to be different. So when you think of dog from now on, you can say, I'm going to say Aussie, because I think it's dog. I can re-trigger my brain to think Aussie automatically, rather than four legs like I did before. The first time you go to do this, guess what? I'm going to think of four legs first. But after I'm done thinking of four legs, I'm going to think of oxygen. And then the second time I go to do it, or third, fourth, whatever, I'm going to start to think about four legs. And I'm going to read up right my brain really, really quickly to think of And then third, fourth, fifth time, whenever you get there and you look different, I'm going to automatically start to think of You have to retrain your brain. You can. Or you can just go on autopilot and let your thoughts take over here. You you tend to learn why you your actual potential is not. You do not. You do not have a test. You do not have a test. So, I'm going to give you this resource. This is an amazing resource. I spent thousands of dollars to find this resource. I'm giving it to you guys for free. It's called positiveintelligence.com. There's a book associated with it. There's a bunch of videos online to help you learn about it. And what you're going to find, you can take the assessment that's on there, and you're going to find things called shadow tools. These are the things that sabotage your mind and your success and things that will tell you forward, such as perfectionism. Each one of you has different <laughs> saboteurs that attack you every single day. Now, after you find out your saboteurs, you'll, you'll, the, the positive intelligence will tell you what you can do to battle it and redirect your thoughts. Really cool stuff. You're going to use simple things as bringing full attention to something in your body. So if you guys all close your eyes right now, I want you to put your hand on your chest. I want you to focus 100% of your attention on your heartbeat. 100% of attention is feeling your heart sitting against your chest with your hand. And I want you to feel all the blood that your heart is pumping to the rest of your body. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard, but then it's also things like if you were to rub your fingers together so slightly that you can feel your fingertips. You can bring full attention to something else, like your physiology, something that's real, rather than bringing your attention to a crap thought that's probably not even real or going to manifest itself in real life. Stop wasting your thoughts on crappy things that don't matter. Alright guys, so please, please take advantage of this opportunity right here. Please, please, I promise you, the things you will discover about yourself with that intelligence test. Alright, next, we're going to talk about your language. Your language is the meaning that you give to things. Your language is the meaning 
that you get to think. So, I need two volunteers. You have a front. How many times has that something like that happened? 
in your life. Uh, yeah, and you guys are still young. Could you imagine going your whole life not knowing that your rules are your rules, your silly rules that you put into your brain are ruling over your life rather than you actually feel good about yourself. All right, we're going to go on to the next one. All right, so now this is the one that usually talk about when Google will refer to this the most important. This is the foundation. Your physiology, your body. Your body is the foundation to everything. So if you eat like crap, guess what? You're going to feel like crap. You're going to perform like crap. Your brain's not going to work very well. You need to figure out what kind of foods work best with your body, what kind of foods will give you energy, what kind of drinks are going to give you real sustainable energy, not temporary crap head energy. <laughs> All right? So how many of you guys think that you know how to breathe? You guys know this. Everybody stand up. Stand up, stand up. Again, again. Okay. So I'm gonna take a look while you guys do this. I'm gonna take a look at myself. Alright. Everybody take a deep breath. Okay, so <laughs> what are some characteristics that happen to your body? <laughs> what are some characteristics of what happens to your body when you took a deep breath? Okay. So, if your chest went up and out, and your stomach came in, they pull them in your chest. You've been breathing wrong your entire life. Are you guys crazy? I'm going to teach you the right way right now. So when you guys want to do something correctly with your body, you got to figure out how your body needs to die. All right, so this is my uh, fine <laughs> okay, so I don't really remember the term, the biological term, any biology they have. No, I'm not exactly. There's little tiny sacs inside. There you go, Abby, that's right. All right, so there's these little balls, these little tiny sacs that are all throughout your lungs. Abby, your lungs. Okay? But here's the deal. All, a lot of them, there's a high density of them down at the bottom of your lungs. <laughs> okay? So there's a large capacity of them down here. Your actual rib cage cannot open up like you guys think you can. And that's why when we do this, what we're actually doing is we're shoving our organs up into our lungs and squishing the part that is actually distributing oxygen to our entire body. Um, if you watch a baby, a baby knows how to breathe, and we go, oh, y'all. If you watch a baby when sleeping, you'll see, well, the only thing that's happening is you're coming to up. Your belly should expand, so your organs come out and your lungs push down. That's how to breathe correctly. <laughs> Thank you. 
what you're breathing out of your body. Let's try it. Give me some words. With your breathing pattern, like when if you were at the beach and you were just hanging out, having a good time, really relaxed. It's smooth, right? It's just smooth. Now, imagine you got the news that it's my job yesterday and you get a call that your mom is in the hospital and she can't lift her left side. What happens? Short of breath. Tight. Tight. So, and what other things happen to your body? What happens to your brain? What happens to the rest of your body? Do you some Tense, right. So which one of those two things do you feel better? The beach. <laughs> the beach. So what you're pretty much doing when you learn how to breathe correctly and really breathe from here, you're giving yourself more of a beach type of feeling. You're giving yourself more of a beach type of mentality. More of a still, cool, calm mentality. Now, if you guys go and give this huge presentation for your, you know, final thesis or whatever to graduate, which one do you think you're going to perform better with? Tend to be anxious, not breathing, not giving deep breath. The brain's going to look a lot better. So, other things, how many of you guys work out? No, I'm not working out. Just fine working out. <laughs> how, many guys, how many of you guys know exactly what it takes for your body to work at Peak capacity. <laughs> How many of you guys know what kind of foods you need to ingest for you to feel vibrant and have lots of energy? I have no idea. <laughs> Do you, don't you think that you should go through life to know? Yes. You guys want to have kids later on in life? You're going to drain lots of energy from you? If, if you want to be a teacher, I know some people said they want to be a teacher, they are a teacher. You're going to have lots of energy. Right now, we're really young. Our bodies can kind of handle like all my ears on. That's your language, girlfriend. Anytime you say you can't, these are three, two words I really want you to get. This is these two. Two words that I really want you to kick out of your vocabulary. If you are a leader and you really want to change the world, these are two things you need to get out of your vocabulary. The word can't. And the word try. Okay, everybody pick, some, pick something that's in front of you right now. Just pick something. I think it's just you. Not my hair. You did it? Yeah. Okay, now. Actually, there's not something yet. Yeah, you're right. You're coming up. And mind you, when I, when I call somebody, I'm not picking on anybody because guess what? I did all of this stuff wrong. Okay, so we work here on the stage. Say hi to Monique, everybody. Say hi to Sarah. All right, so I want you to try to fix this with us. This is your son. I want you to try to fix this with us. You put it all up in the problem. That's exactly it. The word try didn't make any sense, no? You can't either do it or you don't do it. Guys, so you either do or you don't. I am a, I am a virtual fitness health coach. They have people all around the country with their health and fitness. That's why that resource at the bottom. That's my website. If you guys need help with a fitness program or you're eating, me and Michelle are going to help you guys out. We are both health and fitness coaches. So we can help people around the country, all right? So I help people all the time. They're like, oh, I tried to work out. I tried it. I was like, did you do it? Did you do one push up? Did you do one jumping jump? Yeah, they did. They did the best they can. They still did it. They didn't just try. What you're doing is your language is killing you. You'll notice that everything you go over, everything that's going to be back in the theater, is going to be categorized under your language, your physiology, or your focus. So anytime you do something and you don't like what's going on, try to pinpoint what it is and try to change it. Try to pinpoint what it is and try to change it in very way. Try to the next way to go Right. It's going to be obvious. It's going to just change it. Just change it. So, I'm going to need a volunteer to tell me what all three of those things are. That's it. And now I expect somebody to get an answer. The three things 
that all of these three, the thing that all three of these have in common your physiology, your focus, and your language, all have to do with you. The biggest thing that's going to hold you back from being successful and changing this world is you. As much as it sucks to say that, I know, I used to play the blame game all the time, guys. I did say, it's that person's fault, it's this environment, it's this school I went to, it's not being able to do that, it's not being able to do this, it's because that theater right bottled them out away. Like, <laughs> we like to play the blame game because it's easier. It's easier on us, but you gotta get your ego out of the way. And those troughs and all those things, back to that first diagram I showed you, get real geeked out about overcoming those obstacles. Red and Team Ninja Warrior, when they finish, what do they feel like? Right. But when they let that one obstacle defeat them, they're done. And that's how you're going to be in life. You don't get geeked out about getting those challenges into this life. Count it all joy when you see trials of various kinds, guys. You are your biggest obstacle. Get these out about finding out how to overcome them. Thank you guys so much.
Are you guys having a good time today? Yeah. All right, y'all. I go to a lot of different seminars, so I went to the biggest one. The biggest one that I recommend to you guys, honestly, is called "Unleash the Power Within" by Tony Robbins. Unleash the Power Within by Tony Robbins. Um, I think he has he, he has one that's the Giant Within. It's a book. It's very similar to what he teaches at the seminar. Um, I'm actually going to be working with Tony Robbins in the next like three, three, four years. I'm really excited. As a speaker, possibly going to TV in August. Uh, oh, okay. Guys, you have no idea what's possible in this world. You have no idea what you're capable of doing. You just have to be able to keep I promise you. I promise you. If you want to change the world, you can. Any more questions? All right, well, have an awesome rest of this conference. Thank you. <laughs>